Health Matters with Dr. Nelson Bulmash, sponsored by the UI Radio Network at uiradionetwork.org. Catch us on Facebook and Instagram at United Intentions and Twitter at Higher Intention. Look for us on 99.1 FM, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and many more. Over the next hour, we'll introduce you to some fascinating people and engaging discussions that may provide you with answers to assist in revolutionizing your own personal health. And now, here's Dr. Nelson. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Nelson Bullmash, the host of Health Matters on the UI Media Network. We're going to talk about pain today. One of the one of the areas that I get the most feedback from all of you is, Dr. Nelson, how do we deal with our unrelenting pain? And I know for some of you, this is a huge, huge problem. It's it's interesting. I would suggest that most of us certainly beyond the age of 30 or 40 are dealing with some kind of chronic pain issue albeit it might be a, a tennis injury to your shoulder or your elbow that you can't quite get rid of it. For some of you, it might be more serious. It might be a tragic car accident that you're suffering from. It It could be if you're a police officer, you've uh, been injured in the line of work, or certainly you firemen are, are so incredible and you put your, yourselves in harm's way every day, which we, we so appreciate and commend you for. You, you're lifesavers, our, our police officers, our firemen, and, and certainly our soldiers. Many of you come back wounded from battle, and, and you're never quite the same. So I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of people that talk to me about, Dr. Nelson, what can I do to help with this horrible low back pain, this chronic knee pain? You know, or, or even some of you who are weekend warriors who love to play soccer, you love to play tennis, and you just have this nagging issue. And many of you have tried wonderful things. You, you go to great acupuncturists, great massage therapists, chiropractors. And, you know, the problem is when some of these are more severe, it's, it's very beneficial. The problem is that we love to do what we do. So if you're a tennis player, if you're a racquetball player, if you love to lift weights, if you love to run... There's a price for it, unfortunately, and, you know, it never seemed fair to me. It seemed ironic that those of us who love to work out, who love to exercise, often are put in situations where we can't, and it's a real problem for a lot of us, and, and I put myself in that category. When I was 22 years of age, I fell down a flight of stairs during an ice storm, and I've, I broke my back in four to six places, and though I get amazing, I mean, really high-quality massage, great chiropractic adjustments, occasionally acupuncture. I have nutritional supplements that help keep my inflammation down. I work out at least six days a week doing something. And yet I still have pain that tremendously influences the quality of my life. It's there when I wake up in the morning to greet me when I get out of bed. And I have my amazing wife who says, oh, sweetheart, how old are you today, honey? 80, 90, a little older, and I have to look at her, and I snarl, and I say, go back to bed, sweetheart, and leave me alone, and don't talk to me until after my 30-minute hot shower. And I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about. You have some little glitchiness that just drives you crazy. So listen, I brought in one of my favorite guests, Dr. Hal Blattman from Cincinnati, Ohio, place of my birth, and we're going to talk about this. We're going to have an amazing conversation here, folks. We're going to talk about some of the most innovative strategies available today for helping with that intractable pain that just never quite goes away and stays away. So I'm going to have my opening announcements, and you're going to stick around, or at least I hope you do. I know you will. And then we're going to get started, and we're going to have an incredible interview. Dr. Hal is going to share with us some of the most current strategies for helping you at least tremendously reduce and in many cases eliminate some of these chronic pains that suck away your life force, your energy, make you grumpy, and uh, decrease the general quality of your life. So hang tight. Let me make some announcements, and then we're going to get started. First of all, for those of you who are new to my show, I am Dr. Nelson Bullmash, and I have many things. I'm a chiropractor. I'm a naturopath. I'm a nutritionist. I have a, a number of high-level advanced certifications in nutrition. I have coached state, national, and world-class strength athletes. I'm a writer. I have my own radio show. You're listening to it right now, Health Matters with Dr. Nelson Bullmash. I'm on every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're on all major social media platforms. If you're right here in Atlanta, you know how much I appreciate you. You're listening to me on either Talk 10 FM, 
or WGJY FM 99.1. And for my growing friends and followers in Kentucky and Ohio, I really appreciate you too. I'm enjoying getting to know many of you better. You're listening to me on WTTA 101.2 FM. And for the rest of you who are either catching me in 90 countries around the world on Binge TV, or you catch me on all the major social media platforms, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Blog Talk, Facebook Live, just to name a few. Thank you. You know you're my bread and butter, and I appreciate you. And once again, the analytics indicate that my show is growing. That means you're returning, and it means you're sharing my show, and I really appreciate you. Thank you. By the way, I want to remind everybody, speaking of shows, that this show is brought to you by Plus CBD Oil. And I want you to please check them out. You know, I'm sitting here very, very mellow today because right before the show, I actually took some of their CBD oil and all of a sudden I thought, wow, I'm so incredibly chilled. I could just gently nod off. So, you know, you're always a little nervous before you do a show. It gets you prepared for the show. And I took a little bit of this and I am very, very mellow. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Find out more by going to Plus CBD Oil. That's pluscbdoil.com. All right. Now, got some other cool things I want to connect you with. If you want to connect with us, you can do so. You can follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube as United Intentions. And Higher Intention on Twitter. If you want to follow me directly, I'm Dr. Nelson Bullmesh. As you know, you can get a hold of me on Facebook, YouTube. My YouTube, by the way, is Dr. Nelson's YouTube channel. I'm on Facebook and I'm on LinkedIn under, once again, Dr. Nelson Bullmesh. All right. Last thing, but very important, folks. Save the date. You heard me. Save the date. July 20th will be at Gate City Brewing Company in Roswell, Georgia, for our Awaken Atlanta celebration. For those of you who don't know what this is, Awaken Atlanta celebration uh, party is our is is a big event to really launch our Adla- our Awaken Atlanta new radio show with Shannon McVeigh and Tim Ray. Yeah, they're doing an incredible job bringing forth as we are all here at United Intentions conscious media. It's amazing. Listen folks, we got people who are coming up from various places all over the United States. I know we have people from Florida, from California, for example, who are coming up. And we have people that are coming in from out of the United States. So it's a big deal. If you want to join us, it's going to be an amazing network opportunity. We're going to meet people who are all committed to really expanding conscious media in the world. So we'll all be there. Join us. We'd love to have you. It's going to be an amazing event, a lot of fun, and and really an incredible networking opportunity. All right, let's jump in. My friend of many years and folks who are listening to me once again on WTTA 101.2 FM out of Cincinnati, my hometown, one of your home favorites, Dr. Hal Blattman, MD, is here to join us. He is the founder. Need that expanded? There we go. He's the founder and medical director of the Blattman Health and Wellness Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. He is a nationally recognized specialist in myofascial pain and co-author of The Winner's Guide to Pain Relief, a reference for treating myofascial pain from migraine headaches to plantar fasciitis. He is credentialed in pain management, occupational and environmental medicine, and an integrative holistic medicine, and is a cranial sacral therapist and healing touch practitioner. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Hal Blattman. Nelson, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and and to talk to you again. I, I love that introduction. You, this is such a wonderful thing for people. It it really is, and and you know how th- this is so great for a number of ways. You know how much I like you and how much I regard your work. Your work is pioneering. It is you're innovative. You're creative, and you are bringing to the world through your teaching, through your literature. You, I think you published what two two publications last year. Is that correct, Hal? Um, c- contributions to, to po- yes, yeah, two medic, yes, to two to two major journals, and uh, Hal, I have to tell you, the last time I had you as a guest on my show, I hadn't received your book, and I and I have to talk about this because you have done a brilliant, brilliant job on this. Can you see this? 
Yes. I, I'm yes. holding up your book. I just want to make sure everybody can see it. Okay. So, um, so the title of this is The Art of Body Maintenance, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief. This is incredible. I, I had the privilege and I refer to this. I use this as a, as a Bible, if you will, for all kinds of myofascial pain issues. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. You guys uh, have done a great job. And I understand that you did this with Brad Eckvall. Yes, he's the artist. Um, and and he his pen did all the pictures and original drawings that teach people where pain comes from and how they can use a little rubber ball like this. Love it. To massage their body and try to make a lot of that go away. Uh, you know, Hal, I, I may have to get another one of those. I'm not sure if my dog or one of my kids ran off with my ball. I feel like if my toys not, were taken from my, my playground here. <laughs> I tell people that if they have a dog, they need to write their name on the ball. <laughs> I love that. My dog loves to, to chew on things like that. Hal, I, I just want to point this out, and I could really – we could do a whole show in your book. It's so incredible. So I do want to reference it, and, and I do want to give you praise because it's amazing. And for those of you who are watching our show, what I want you to know is that this book is – really innovative in that it gives you ways to to help with your own body maintenance. And I, and I hope you can see this. For example, if you have quadriceps pain here, you see, you see here, and I know this isn't going to be seen great, but you see where the pain refers to and how you can use the bowl that Dr. Hal Blattman is talking about to begin to work out the myofascial disturbances that are creating distortions in function and are increasing pain. So, Hal, I, I think probably we need to define some terms for people. Let's talk, because you're really big on myofascial work. Let's, let's talk to our people about what that is. What, when we refer to myofascial work, what exactly are we talking about? And how does it impact so, the body's function? If you take a steak apart and you look at it really closely, you'll see that there's a thin film around every cell, if you have a microscope, right. around every fiber, goes around the whole muscle, holds the muscle together, goes through the muscle. And then at the end, it comes together to form what we call the gristle, or we might call a tendon, which nowhere in your body attaches to bone. It interweaves with the fascia that covers your bone and then continues into the next muscle with no interruption from head to toe. And so we're talking about the tissue that holds our bodies together, holds your uterus and ovaries inside your pelvis and up high enough so they don't fall out the bottom. It holds. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because I, you know, holds, a lot of people always wonder. It holds your heart in place and still lets it beat, holds your liver in place and still lets all your parts move. So you're held together by this tissue called fascia that when we were in medical school, we were told to clean it off the dissection and not pay attention to it and just throw it out so we could get to the important stuff underneath it. And what we've learned is that the fascia is probably the most important tissue in the body, not only holding us together, but the interaction between these fascia strings that we'll call them right. and the nervous system that intertwines within it becomes the antenna for our brain to understand what our periphery is doing. Ah, got it. So, so Hal, I have to ask you a very pointed question. You are a traditionally trained medical doctor. How has conventional medicine dealt with these problems and has it been effective? I think that when we talk about pain, what we were collectively taught in our schools and conventional medicine, what spills out and what we teach the public is less than 10% effective. Wow. That's... Really think about it. If your migraine drug worked, you wouldn't get a migraine again ever. Yeah, good point. If you went to the, the doctor with a sore throat and every time you stopped your penicillin, you got another sore throat, you'd start to think penicillin didn't work. Yeah, very, so very good point. The migraine drugs help you cope, but nothing makes it go away. Right. Interesting. And you end up at a pain center. The drugs that work are the opioids and the narcotics. They help relieve pain, but they can only do so much. And where we were taught that used whatever dose it takes to get people back to work, we learned subsequently over the next 10 or 15 years that that's not the right idea that gets people addicted to medicine. And the medicine doesn't work at the high doses any better for many parts and it works at the lower doses because what we eat and our toxic environment gets in the way of that medicine working and people end up not knowing that they go to the doctor ask for more and the doctor isn't taught the connection because just like we're not taught in school about fascia right we're also not taught about food 
and nutrition. Excellent. Hal, listen, we're going to have to take a quick commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Nelson Bullmash. My guest is Dr. Hal Blattman, and we're talking about myofascial pain problems. We'll be right back. With all of life's stressors, it can be challenging to stay balanced and healthy. Hemp-derived cannabis oil or CBD supplements such as Plus CBD Oil are becoming well-recognized as a key supplement to optimize wellness. By working directly with our own internal system that maintains homeostasis, the endocannabinoid system, CBD, can help restore the body's natural rhythm when we need it the most. Learn more about Plus CBD Oil and how to balance the system that balances you from www.pluscbdoil.com. That's www.pluscbdoil.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back from our first break. I'm Dr. Nelson Bullmash. You're listening to another episode of Health Matters. And my guest is the esteemed Dr. Hal Blattman. We're, we're discussing many things today. We're discussing pain relief. We're talking also about his incredible book, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief. And, you know, one of the things that, once again, that I want everybody to know that's so impressive about this book, I hope you can see this okay, is Dr. Blattman gives specific pictures and, uh, and detailed descriptions about how you can use a, a ball to, to help remove these distortions. We're talking about myofascial pain syndromes. There it is. Thank you, Dr. Hal. And, uh, and it's been very, very effective. I use this, if you will, as, as a guide, almost a, a Bible, if you will, to deal with many of these distortions. So, Hal, uh, again... You're saying, in other words, that really, though conventional medicine is fantastic for acute situations, life-threatening situations, and that if you're in intractable pain, that you might need medication. But ultimately, it's not the it's it's not the cure, if you will. We don't get at the root cause with with medication. Is what I'm hearing. Is that correct? That's correct. If you want to get at the root cause of pain and you want to figure out where your pain comes from, I've made up the five rules of pain CSI. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Tell us about the them. Blattman method of CSI. And rule number <laughs> one is that you can't believe the pain comes from where you feel it. Okay. Your headache does not come from your head. The pain in your knee, you think it comes from your knee, but how many people do you know who've had their knee totally replaced and the knee still hurts and there's no knee there? Very good point. Your left arm pain could be your heart attack. You have no idea. Right. So you can't believe the pain comes from where you feel it. That's rule number one. Got it. Rule number two, it's not important what you think the pain feels like. We spend a lot of time taking the history, and that's what we're taught to do in medical school, and find out all the nuances of where do you feel it, what does it feel like, da-da-da. Come to think of it, our brain cannot tell the difference between numbness, tingling, burning, itch, tickle, sharp, stabbing, dull, achy, none of it matters. All those sensations are caused by the nerve endings in between the strings of your fascia that get torqued and twisted, and that's where this pain sensation comes from. So you can't believe what you think it feels like. Very, very good point. Rule number three, what you can believe is that where specifically you are tender, millimeter by millimeter, as we go through and examine your body together, trying to make sure that what I feel on my side of your skin matches what you feel on your side of your skin. And the places where you're specifically tender are either where these fascia strings that go through your body are kinked and tied in a knot, or where they attach and weave to you and you've pulled and injured the weave that holds you together. Mm. Rule number four, The places that are most tender as we do this generate most of the pain you feel. And rule number five, no matter how long you've had this pain, as quickly as you can get the fascia strings that are kinked to unkink, and as fast as you can heal and strengthen the places where you attach that you've injured that hold you together, as fast as you can do that, the pain you thought you had will go away. No matter how many years you've had it, there's almost no such thing as intractable pain if you can find the injuries. Interesting. And that is such a good point, Hal. 
Now, certainly there is intractable pain. There are things that I can't find either, but that's why I would tell you that this paradigm that I'm describing is better than 90% effective, where the paradigm we were taught about inflammation and ice and elevation and all the rest of that is less than 10%. Wow. Hal, I want to mention a, a case that you and I actually worked together. I had a patient that I sent up to you that you did such a remarkable job with. And and I want to talk about it because it's interesting. You and I do work differently, but but there are many parallels to what we do. And absolutely, you know, we had a lot of fun on Saturday. We were working via speakerphone, and I was analyzing uh, both with your brilliance and and my skills uh, a patient, as I mentioned, that you and I were working together with. And it was so fascinating because she had a trigger point of a muscle called her supraspinatus, which is at the top of the shoulder blade. In this case, on the right side. And, you know, she was in a lot of pain and had a lot of hip pain and a lot of shoulder discomfort and a lot of spinal tension. Uh, I used a cold laser and then I did some trigger point work and suddenly she got off the table and said, wow, I have no more pain. So, right. you know, you, you and I tag teamed her and, uh, and really had a remarkable outcome. And one of the beautiful things is that when you have the idea right and you have touched this person's body and, and you know where it's coming from, as quickly as you can make that change in their fascia, you can make the pain go away. You don't have to go home and do this for four hours and four days and four weeks and find out if you're right. You know right then and there yeah, yeah. that you had the right answer and so right. does your patient. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You're, you're, you're right. You can't fake it. I mean, she got up off the table after, oh, I think I lasered her for two minutes and then I did two more minutes of trigger point work. And it was just remarkable. She got off the table and, and said, I, I don't believe this. I, you know, my back isn't tight. I can move my shoulders symmetrically, right? Both and of them. And your skill set to find those things is equally amazing. And you're able to do that. And as soon as you touch, you know. Yeah, no question. And and one of the things that we find is that the person who did your surgery, the person who is treating you for your chronic pain and giving you the medications and whatnot, have they ever really touched you? Have they ever examined and touched your body millimeter by millimeter? The person who has the higher end of this skill set can touch your body and knows by your texture yes. where your injuries are and where your pain comes from. And that requires touch. You can't find that on an MRI scan. Yeah. Hey, Al, thank you so much for bringing that up. I, you know, one of my pet peeves uh, about practitioners uh, particularly with conventional medicine, and I don't forgive me for for taking a jab, but it is it's annoying to me. Is how many patients come in to see me, and I say, well, what did the doctors say when they when they evaluated you, uh, when they ran you through your your ranges of motion, when they checked your reflexes, when they did any orthopedic tests? Doctor Nelson, I, I I don't know what you're talking about. The, the doctor never touched me. How in the world? We're taught to measure range of motion. We're taught to put pins in people and see if they can still feel the pin, but we're not taught how to touch. Yeah, you're right, and that and that's a real pet peeve because ultimately, in my humble opinion, you you can't get to the cause, to the root of a person's pain, uh, if you or 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 their condition, unless you get really good at what we call palpation and evaluation. So I, I think that's one of the things that's so you wonderfully unique about you is that your skills of evaluation are outstanding. Talk about that a little bit. Talk about what makes you unique in your evaluation and your treatment. Well, you know, the first thing is the patient's real and they're not here to pull the wool over my eyes. They're, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt right off the bat. Right. And then, you know, from a situation where your, your doctor has never touched you and then you come to my office and I look at the range of motion in your shoulders and your hips and your, your neck, if that's what we're looking at, and then I touch your body and I show you where you're tender. And nobody has ever touched your body and told you where you're tender mm, nice. just by your texture. So right. immediately the person on the, the table side of my fingers knows that I know. Yes. And knows that yes. what I feel on my side of their skin is the same thing they feel on their side of their skin. And then the question is, how do you know? Right, right. Because I don't miss. Yeah. And it's not yeah. that I miss and that I could be right or wrong. All I'm doing is telling you what I feel in your body. And what I feel is what I feel. Just so happens that it's where you are tender. Right. And you, you've been in practice for goodness. How long now, Hal? Gosh, it seems like 30 years. Yeah, I'm sure. We, we met in the 19, 
80s or 90s? Yeah, yes. 90s. It's, it's, yeah, 90s. it's been a long, long, long time. And and so my, my point being, Hal, that you you have touched thousands of people. And when you when you get to, we, we call it palpation, when you get to touch people's body and you begin to map out these distortions in the myofascial patterns, you, you eventually develop a very deep understanding as to how these myofascial distortions create these chronic pain patterns that medication alone is never going to get rid of. And one of the beauties in the book is that I have the pain uh, patterns. So you can look at the pain pattern for lower back pain and realize it's coming from your butt muscles. And then you can take right. this ball and massage those butt muscles. And as fast as you get those tender knots in your butt muscle to be less tender, your back pain feels better. And you know, I'm right. <laughs> yeah, where, you are Where right. that doesn't happen, maybe the disc that was on your MRI scan turns out to be important but it's dangerous to assume it's the right answer and you've never been touched. Yeah, yeah I, I, I certainly agree with you. Hal, uh, I had a, a, a number of patients ask me to ask you uh, a, a variety of questions. And, and one of them is if you do severe damage to a, a fascial link, if you will, does the fascia ever repair itself? So every time you injure yourself, your biology runs a repair program, okay. an app, if you will. Yep. And that the function of that app is dependent on the first 48 hours to really ramp up and get started. And the things that slow down that healing or may even stop it are ice and anti-inflammatory medicines. Ah, so you're saying, in other words, ideally, I mean, unless you have something like a broken neck or broken back, don't ice and don't use NSAIDs, over-the-counter medications to decrease the, the uh, inflammation within the first 48 hours especially. I wouldn't use them at all. Okay. Okay. The dangers of NSAIDs far outweigh their benefits. So the only, the pain that NSAIDs take away is the inflammatory pain in your fascia from food. Otherwise the NSAIDs increase kidney failure, increase um, ulcer disease. They stop your biology from repairing the wear and tear to the cartilage in your joints that you did from that day. And then they also cause heart attacks. Yeah. And none of that's a good idea to me. So those never cross my lips. So, Hal, I do have a question, another question uh, I was asked to ask you. I've got a whole stream of them that I'll interject uh, throughout the show. One is, Nelson, I don't want to take over-the-counter meds, but I, for example, I dislocated my shoulder or I tore a hamstring. What can I do for the insane pain the, the, the first one or two weeks if you, know, if you don't you want know, me to take? That's what we use opiates for. We use narcotic pain medicine at low doses for that kind of ah, pain. Ah, okay, okay. Fortunately, these days in many states, you can also use medical marijuana. In most states in the country, you can also use CBD oil. You can put things topically on the muscle, and there are CBD products that will do that. So there are places to go that will help with the pain. And then put heat on it and accelerate the healing that your body knows how to do. Okay, now I'm, let's talk about that. I'm going to stop you right there a minute, Hal, because, you know, you have you have three groups of people today. You and I are in the camp where I tell people, look, do everything you can, uh, at, at least for the first 40 to 72 hours, not to uh, uh, apply ice and not to take NSAIDs, you know, because we want the immune system to come in and we want it to eliminate cells that are damaged or dying, right, so that we can, we can begin to uh, initiate effectively that whole healing process. Correct. And if you, you mute that in the first two days, it doesn't ramp up in day three and four. You've already decreased ah. your potential for healing that injury. And if you think about it, when you sprain your ankle, what does your body do? Does it warm it up or cool it down? Well, it cools and it no, down. It warms, well, it warms it up. Body Excuse me. Your warms it up. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was, I was thinking that it, it warm it up. It warms it up to increase blood flow, speed up metabolism, yeah. speed up healing. Right. Why would you ever? want to go against what the body's trying to do. If you want to facilitate the body, you heat it up more than the body can do so the body can use its energy for other stuff. I love it. Hal, we got to take another break. I can't believe we're halfway through this amazing show already. Thank you. Such great information. Once again, folks, don't touch that dial. I'm Dr. Nelson Blomash. You're listening to Health Matters, and my guest is my friend and incredible colleague, Dr. Hal Blattman. We're talking about the Winner's Guide to Pain Relief, his book and his techniques for decreasing both acute and chronic pain syndromes. We'll be right back.
Download the UI Media Smart app at uimediaapp.com to watch and listen to all your favorite shows anytime from anywhere in the world. Shows that enrich, entertain, educate, and feed the conscious cells throughout your body. We bring you never heard before topics in health, inspiration, music, psychics, numerology, current affairs, controversies, and much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.uimediaapp.com and start raising your frequency now. We're back. Dr. Nelson Blumash here. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Health Matters. Once again, I have my friend and esteemed colleague, Dr. Hal Blattman here. We're talking about dealing with pain syndromes, particularly those that people just can't seem to get rid of, those nagging problems that, you know, the the tennis elbow, the chronic plantar fasciitis, the chronic low back pain, and so forth. So, Hal, I, I, I had to take a quick break, um, so I didn't finish my thought. You're, when is it okay to use heat, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something before I have you answer this. I want to tell you a quick story. Uh, years ago, I took a course in physical therapy, and the gentleman who took it was a really, really neat guy. He was a high-level athlete himself of many, many years, and he talked about getting a real severe injury. And he, used to, and he said, you know, folks, I used to tell everybody ice the first 48 hours. And he said, then one day I got a very severe injury, and I had this martial arts master that asked me if he could help take care of me. And he said he did the craziest thing ever. And I'm still, I, all these years later, I'm still stunned by what he did. And I said, did it involve heat? He said it absolutely did. He said this gentleman took water and he heated up at a simmer, in other words, a low boil, all these herbs, these Chinese herbs, smelled awful. And then he put wraps in these, and this cauldron, if you will, of simmering herbs, and he soaked them. So his wrapping was soaked in these herbs and he put it on. He said, it was so hot. I could barely stand it. And he said, you're going to keep that on. And then periodically he changed it and did the same thing again. He said he woke up the next day and he could not believe the level of function. His point being, so tell you to ice it or treat it with heat. I no longer have a, a direct answer. So when is it okay, Hal? Uh, I know, for example, if maybe if somebody has a broken neck and a football injury, I know they typically might put them in an ice bath to stop uh, from the, the cord expanding and, and creating um, permanent damage uh, via paralysis. What kind of injuries is it okay to heat or not do anything at all but let the immune system come in and do its magic? I think the, the examples that are most clear for ice, number one is a burn. You really want to slow down blood flow. You want to slow down metabolism. You want the cells to have a chance to recover rather than die. Okay, good so point. So burn gets ice. Um, I would think an allergic bee sting. You Very want to good. slow down blood flow. Okay. That's going to take ice. Insect stings, same kind of thing. You want to slow down blood flow. I think the issue, uh, the example you had with the neck is another good one. But if you don't have those specific kinds of things, you probably want to put heat on almost everything. Got it. Very, very, very good. When you get off the tennis court and your shoulder hurts, you don't want to put ice on it and take two Advil. Yeah. You want to put heat on and leave the Advil alone. Otherwise, you've just turned that little tweak in your rotator cuff tendon into a long-term injury. Mm, very, very good point. Hal, speaking of which, I want to jump into nutrition now, if that's okay with you. Uh, you know, you know a lot about uh, this this topic. Let's talk about how important nutrition is, be, because we're not we don't want to just get caught in the trap of this interview of of treating pain. Let's switch gears for a moment, if you will, Hal. Let's talk about how you can eat and maybe supplement to help eliminate the onset of chronic problems in the first place. So let's talk about uh, a good um, measure. And one of them is, do you have rain pain? You know what I mean by that? So are you talking about the kind of pain that, like my mother is the first person before the weatherman even says it, sweetheart, she'll say to me, it's going to rain the next 24 hours. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to tell you that if you can feel rain pain, then you've eaten something that has inflamed your fascia sometime in the last six weeks and 100% of rain pain. And I've not found an exception. There must be one, but let me say 100 Okay. 100% of rain pain is food-based inflammation from something 
you have put in your body in the last six weeks. So if you want to make it go away, you need a really clean diet for the things that are most important to you. And if you think you're clean and you have rain pain, you're not. It's not arthritis. It's not any of those things you're talked about. It's not your rheumatism. Right. It's the inflammation in your fascia from the food that your body asked you not to eat. And you might not know that your body asked you not to eat it. Yeah, very, very good point. Sadly, you're going to get rid of the best weather woman I've ever known. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure she'll be happy not to have that rain pain because. But you know what? The, the, the rain pain only tells you the barometer is going down. Yeah. Got it. The weatherman knows that too. You can still be wrong and it might just be cloudy and not rain that day. Yeah. Yeah. You know the weather is changing. So, so, so let's, Hal, let's talk about the foods that create the greatest level of inflammation for the most people. Number one is going to be bread flour. Okay. So Unquestionably, wheat. the bread flour grown in this country is not something that we should be eating. And why is that? Um, two reasons. One is that the plan has been modified. It's no longer four feet tall. It's no longer amber waves of grain. The wheat plant's a foot, foot and a half tall. It's short. And it's got way more gluten and causes way more injury than even 20 years ago. Got it. So number, oh, and that's not enough. The wheat fields are sprayed with a, a weed killer called Roundup before harvest so that there's no plant left alive in the field to gunk up the machines that are harvested with. Mm. And Roundup is a dangerous poison. Um, the people that made it, the company that made it, tried to convince that it was safe, but California has now labeled it as a multi-potential carcinogen. It's not something that we want to put in our bodies. It accumulates. It causes endocrine disruption. It causes pain, causes cancer. So wow. there's reasons to not eat the bread flour beyond the inflammatory reaction in your body. Got it. And usually, if you're really sensitive, the tiniest amount of bread flour can make you hurt for three or four weeks. Yeah, very, very it's Not true. just overnight. You got four days of my, my back just went out pain. One of the best examples, if you wake up with a stiff neck in the morning, it wasn't the way you slept. You don't sleep that wrong. It wasn't the window. It was the pizza you ate the night before because there's two things on that pizza that can tighten your muscles and glue your fascia together the bread flour, and the dairy. Mm. And wh tell me why, wh why is, is dairy so bad, Hal? You know, I'm not, I don't know how so bad. We know that traditionally raised cows have a lot of antibiotics in them right. and in the milk. There's all those issues that go with it. There's a website you might look at if it's still around, milksucks.com. <laughs> I love it. That, that talks about all that. But many of us, we've had so much milk in our lives. You know, humans are the only animals after infancy that drink it, and it's not even our own. Yeah, you're right. There can't be anything in it we really need. Right. I know one of the big yeah. problems with it, Hal, is that you get uh, you get a cross-reactivity phenomenon with it. So you have casein that, from a molecular perspective, is close enough to wheat that you get, uh, the body says, wait a minute, you look pretty much like you. I'm going to go after both of you. So I know that's a and, significant and, and problem. And the beard and the mustache don't help disguise you at all. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so what are some of the other foods that uh, that, that we Potatoes. need to be careful? Okay, talk a to me. White, a white, red, or blue potato. Not a sweet potato. They're okay. Yams are okay. Okay. But the starch in the potato and some of the other alkaloids in the potato cause a leaking of the membranes in your gut and lungs, cause an inflammatory reaction from the sugar in your body as it raises your insulin level. So when somebody's really clean, we find that a crumb of bread flour, even cross-contamination, can make you hurt for a few weeks. A teaspoon of a mashed potato can make you hurt for four days. Wow. A banana can make you hurt for two days. Diabetics should never eat a banana. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, artificial sweeteners can make you hurt for a month. You really, you eat for two reasons. You might what it tastes like in being hungry, talk about what you eat and when you eat. But the reason you eat is two. One is to get fuel to burn, and the other is to get raw materials to build new parts. So when you look at the food on your plate, is that fuel quality, high octane fuel? Right. Or is it junk? And when you look at the food on your plate, am I putting good material in my body to build high quality parts? Or I'm putting stuff in my body that's going to fall apart. 
Yeah, and, and Hal, I do I want to mention something, which is that when you're eating really high quality food, it really tastes good. One of the things that people don't understand is when you're eating poor quality food, for example, vegetables, and you have kids that say this tastes like cardboard, I can tell you this, it is not organic or beyond organic uh, food because real food is loaded with nutriture that makes, like minerals, that makes it taste good. Wonderful. When you have really healthy fruits and vegetables, as an example, it tastes unbelievable. It's, you know, it, bite into a, a, a yummy strawberry that's organic or beyond organic, you know, where, where it's rich with minerals and antioxidants and vitamins and minerals and fiber. And it's as succulent as it gets. It's and like you bite into the other ones and it's just not the same. Yeah, they have no taste. And that's a big indicator that they're devoid of nutrition. Tomatoes the same way. Yes, sir. The things you put on the grill the same way. It depends on what you feed the animals that you're eating. Yeah, no, no you question. you feed the plants that you're eating. It all matters. So, yeah. Hal, and you may not feel qualified to answer this, but I'm going to throw it at you anyhow. And if, if you have an opinion, great. If not, no worries. Are you, what, what, how do you recommend people eat? Are you part of this, this wave of people that are big fans of veganism? Do you think that it's, it's good to have uh, animal, uh, f animal protein, if you will, in your diet? Do you have an opinion on that at all in, in terms I of do. health and decreasing and inflammation? It's a, it's a question that we all ask all the time. I, I'll tell you a couple of things that I've found to be true. Okay. One is that there's no diet that works for everybody. Good point. We're all different. And some people need meat. And some people who are vegetarians don't need the meat at all, and they thrive and they do well without it. Right. And it's hard to tell who's going to do well and who's not. Yeah. On the other side of that, there is a common list of poisons or not good food that's universal to our species that we all need to stay away from. Talk to me. Bread flour, sugar, potato, fruit juice, artificial sweeteners, and hydrogenated or fake fat are at the top of the list. All very, very, very good points, Hal. Very, very And good. none of them are real food. No, you're right. Yeah, so it, if, you just, if you just eat real food, you've already got half the battle. It saddens me sometimes, Hal. Uh, you know, I have a, 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 a big background in nutrition, and it, it, it's amazing to me that sometimes you can even see people at Whole Foods who find a way to get the only boxed and processed food even at Whole Foods, mm -hmm. you know, you think, well, the person's going to Whole Foods. They're going to have lots of fruits and veggies and this and that. And somehow they end up with a version, albeit it might be cleaner than, uh, and right. I, I don't want to pick on, you know, some of the other leading grocery stores, but you know what I'm saying? In other words, they, they go and they still get the very refined folks. You want to stay and, away and from the point. refined food. Don't think that you can go into a, a high end, healthy food store and not have to read the labels right yeah you still you, need to read labels. i mean you, you have more labels that you'd like in a store like whole foods right than you would at your other supermarket but it you still have to read the labels yeah folks uh, how wonderful point again we're living in a time where you you either have to educate yourself or you have to listen to experts, for example, Dr. Blattman and myself, who have spent years learning about how, in this case, to take good care of yourself or how to recover from an injury so that you you end up having a life that works for you. So you don't end up living in a recliner or on a couch and not being able to work or not being able to enjoy life. Always surround yourself with people who know areas that you are weak in your understanding so that you don't get caught in a trap because... Yes. Let me give you another one. Yeah. Listen to your body. If you wake up in the morning with pain you didn't have last night and you didn't fall out of bed overnight or get hurt sleepwalking, then you ate something last night and your body sent you to your room and you should pay attention. Yeah. Same vein. If you go to bed at night with pain you didn't have this morning, you ate something for breakfast or lunch and your body doesn't want you to do that. Hal, I want to talk about that. We have to take a, another break. I'm sorry for interrupting you, sir. Uh, I want to talk about that very topic. I had a, a very interesting case about just what you described days ago. So we're going to take a break, folks. This is our last break for our show today. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Nelson Bullmash. My guest is Hal Blattman, and we're talking about effective strategies uh, for both helping yourself through Dr. Blattman's book and his methodologies for decreasing pain issues and then 
a moment ago we were describing ways that you can eat to help decrease inflammation and help you recover from pain problems. We'll be right back. Are you ready to be the hero of your own story? It's time to put the power of your health back into your hands. Join us for our free 25 day journey to get your life back now from chronic illness. Our doctors and experts will guide you back to optimal health. Then he had abdominal pain. So then she gave him some rum to settle down because um, he can't relax. Well, then he has more abdominal pain. So then he took an ibuprofen, um, which of course can burn a hole through your stomach. And now you really have abdominal pain. He goes to the emergency room and they said, you're fine. You're not dying. Your blood works normal. You look good. His vital signs were normal. His labs were normal, but they didn't examine him. So sure enough, his, he's bloated. How can you feel good if you're bloated? All your intestines are swollen up. Um, and uh, so at least I could confirm to him that he's not well. But the question remains, does he want to be well? Is he willing to do the work to learn about himself or does he wish to be clueless? Well, some of us want to be clueless. Go to www.getyourlifebacknow.live and begin your journey today. Folks, we're back. I'm Dr. Nelson Bullmash. Once again, you're listening to Health Matters. My guest is my friend and esteemed colleague, Dr. Hal Blattman. We're talking about his amazing book here, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief. It's an instructional manual, how to help you take care of yourself to maintain yourself well. We've also discussed certain nutritional strategies. Um, we haven't talked about supplements, but, uh, but specific things to avoid in your diet to help you both recover and stave off inflammation, which ultimately is the silent, or in some cases in acute injuries, the non-silent agent in helping to destroy things like your joints and your tendons. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Hal, I, I want to share a, a, a very quick story with you, and then I want to go into talking about repairing cartilage and tendons, if, if you would. I had a patient come in, oh, last weekend, and she was beside herself. She couldn't walk. She couldn't drive. She had to have her boyfriend bring her in. Very educated, bright, athletic woman. And she said, Dr. Nelson, I don't know what happened. I woke up and I was in so much pain. I, I, I couldn't walk. I could barely talk. I couldn't drive. My boyfriend had to pick me up, get me in the car and bring me in. What in the world is happening? And you're right. She didn't injure herself. And so she, it made no sense to her that she could wake up and be in so much pain. She couldn't get out of her bed to go uh, dress herself and such. So that is a perfect example of what you mentioned, eating something the night before that stresses the body and short circuits it, rendering you in extreme structural distress, if you will. I want to go into, I want to shift gears here now, if you will, because you're a, an expert at this and I want you to talk to me about repairing cartilage in joints. And then let's go into, in the last minutes of our show, repairing tendons as well. So joints, we're taught when we go to school, and the orthopedic surgeon and literature teach that we're born with a certain amount of cartilage, and we use it up with time. And when it's used up, we get our joint replaced, and that's all there is to it. Right. And I started to wonder, does that really make any sense? You know that we regrow a, our, the lining of our intestines every three days. Yes. We grow new skin every one to two weeks. Right. We grow new brain cells. Does it make any sense that we don't restore cartilage from daily wear and tear? And so for 25 years, we've been restoring joint cartilage. And there's only, there's two things you need to do. One is you need to wear it out more slowly and regrow it faster than your body normally can so that you balance the equation between wear and tear and the ability to restore. Mm. If you can balance that equation, right. then whatever you do at a point in time is sustainable for your lifetime. Then you never have to have the conversation, well, how long will it last? And when will it wear out? You're good as long as you keep that in mind forever. Forever. Interesting. And then you can do something at a point in time. So we find that glucosamine helps joints get the nutrition they need to restore. 
but glucosamine by mouth only works for knees. Glucosamine for your jaw joint, your thumb, your fingers, your big toe, and also your knees, glucosamine needs to go through skin or be put in through a needle. And we're looking for something that a person can do every single day to balance wear and tear and ability to restore. And so we use glucosamine cream that we have developed over the last 25 years and refined and works really well from your jaw to your big toe. Another thing we can do is we can inject glucosamine into a joint. Another thing we can do is we can inject ozonated oxygen, so-called prolozone, also helps joint cartilage recover. And then there's the things you read about, platelet-rich plasma and stem cells, which also work tremendously well to help restore joints. The key is, do you still have the range of motion you want that you're going to be happy with? Right. If your knee goes totally straight and you can bend your knee more than 90 degrees, there is no way through that range of motion that you are possibly bone on bone. Ah. If your joint still moves, you have at least two cell layers thickness of cartilage to allow that joint to move. And that gives you time to restore. Right. Where your joint gets stuck and doesn't move further that's where you might be bone on bone and you don't want to go there because that's where your cartilage is trying to restore and you're trying to push it there and you yes. rub it off again. Yeah. Got it. Wow. So, Very interesting. So, so let's talk about this. Are there strategies, even when you get to the point where your knee gets stuck that you can redevelop, if you will, and reformat the cartilage in a knee, for example, if your joint doesn't move well, it's much more difficult. Okay. Hips are harder to save because once you're in trouble, you're in bigger trouble than you think. Mm. Knees are a lot easier to save. But then again, the knee pain doesn't come from the knee. I had a man in to see me earlier this week. He saw me a year ago for some advice and some, some help. He didn't listen to what I told him. I told him where his knee pain came from. I examined his body. I showed him where his fascia was kinked and tender. Right. He went out. He he gave a lip service. He didn't change his diet, didn't do his stuff. He came back to see me this week, a year later. Both knees have been replaced, and he still has pain in both knees. Wow. And all the stuff I told him to do a year ago, he still got on his list to do, or his knee pain's not ever going to go away. That is fascinating. Hal, I, I want to, in these last minutes, I want to talk a little bit, if you if you would, about stem cell work uh, and, and PRP and so forth. Talk to us a little bit about the efficacy of using them to help perhaps repair joints, and uh, whether it be cartilage, tendons, ligaments. So let's talk about a tendon. You, you fall down, you skin your knee, the knee bleeds, you make a scab. Four weeks later, the scab falls off. You have new skin. It's pink at first, and then a couple weeks later, it changes the normal color. Long story, but that's it, right? Yeah, exactly. The, if, when you um, injure a tendon, your tendon might start out like this, and it ends up with some version of that okay. or that or maybe even this. Uh, that's me. <laughs> and the orthopedic surgeon is going to cut this, cut back far enough to get to something reasonably healthy, which is still a compromise, and then drag this over and anchor it to your bone. Got Send it. you to physical therapy to figure it all out. Okay. Meanwhile, you have this partially torn, but also partially repaired tendon. And the reason it's partially repaired is because your body did an insufficient job healing you. Right. At the end of the day, six, eight weeks later, your body has no idea it did an insufficient job. As far as it knows, it did its thing. So if you want to rerun your healing app, you have to re-injure the tendon so the body starts up the healing program again. Okay. So what we do is we take this tendon and we poke holes in it with a needle. That makes the injury happen. You could jump off the roof, but that's too big an injury. We want a controlled very specific injury right where it counts. And we put, we take from your arm and a vein, the blood from you, concentrate the parts of your blood that would make that scab that healed your knee and grew you new skin, Right. put that into this tendon when I poke it with a needle. And in four weeks, when the scab falls out of the tendon, you have new tendon parts holding you together. Fascinating. The important part is, did the needle get in the right place? And do you have enough healing power in your body, as old as you are, and as big as your injury is, to get the job done? And if your platelet-rich plasma isn't young enough, and your injury is too big, then stem cells 
will do a better job, a more thorough job, a more complete job. They have a whole lot more horsepower in them. Right. And they're legal to use in this country. And we get a, we can pull them from your bone marrow. We can pull them from your abdominal fat. But the best way to get stem cells right now in this country is from umbilical cord products and placenta products from healthy, live birth, cesarean section babies whose mothers have donated the placenta and parts. And we're allowed to collect them, test them, make sure they're safe, and then cryopreserve them. And I can make a phone call, order them up, and use them in your body the next day. Fantastic. Hal, I've got a quick question. Patient asked me to ask you this, and we have about two minutes, Max. Uh, young tennis player, very, very good, college athlete, did uh, chiropractic work with me, as a matter of fact, got her feeling much better, did great PT, and uh, did massage, did uh, PMF therapy, got herself to the point where she was feeling pretty good, went back into tennis, and within two weeks, the same nagging injury was there and took her right back out again. What do you recommend for a patient like that? To what part of her body? Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Shoulder. So her <clears throat> rotator cuff components, uh, supraspinatus in particular, subscap, uh, infraspinatus, the, the major constituents of, of the rotator cuff group. One of the things that has impressed me is how much force gets transmitted to the body when there's impact. Yes. I took a golf club, took a nice easy swing as I'm trying to repair my own elbow from golfer's elbow years ago. And I hurt it really bad. I went to a four day golf trip and didn't quit. Mm. And I was amazed how much that sting went through my body on an easy swing yeah. six weeks after I did my repair. So that tennis racket hits her fascia anchors where she holds together aren't strong enough right. to sustain her and they need to be made stronger or when she pulls with that muscle to swing that racket. She can't hold that together well enough. The strings slip, she gets a kink in the strings and she's got her pain back again. Yep. And all the king's horses and all the king's men, until you touch that body, understand the texture of where the injuries are and understand as much as I tell you this is linear, it's not. Right. Well, There's we got a linear component, but the fascia winds around and does all kinds of things in three-dimensional and goes through you also. So to be able to feel and just know from all this experience of 30 years, where is the weakness that this person needs? And we treat, we have treated professional football, professional soccer, professional tennis, professional golf. It's a world that we're part of and we help these yep. injuries repair. Well, within... Now we've done professional ballroom dancing. Fal, uh, Hal, excuse me, with 15 seconds, would you recommend PRP, stem cell to, to help restore? As soon as I touch and know and get an, ask, get an idea how big the damage is and what her, her body is like, we'll have an idea of okay. what she needs to, to try and do that. Very good. Hal, we've got to conclude today. We're down to our last 60 seconds, sir. It is always such a, such a privilege to work with you, whether it be to work on difficult patient cases to do shows like this. I'm so happy I know you and I have the opportunity to work with you. You are a pleasure. It is an honor, sir. Thank you. And, and don't forget, musicians are athletes. You, oh, yes. We've saved careers of professional musicians from a guitar to a violin because of the same kinds of injuries. Right. And the same kinds of Hal, quickly, we've got 30 seconds. Tell everybody how they can get a hold of you and then I've got to close out. Our main office is in Cincinnati, Ohio. You can find our website at blatmanhealthandwellness.com. I'm in Manhattan one day a month. I'm in Seattle very part-time. I have office practices in all three places. I teach at Bastyr University Medical School in Seattle. Call our Cincinnati number. We schedule all appointments from there. And the Cincinnati website, blatmanhealthandwellness.com, is the main website that has so much information. All right. Hal, I apologize. I've got to, got to close it out, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be here next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Always be your best. I will speak with you next Tuesday. Take care. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Health Matters with Dr. Nelson Bullmash, where we help you discover how to ignite your mind, body, and spirit connection. Join us Hal, can you hear me? When yes. We will bring you Hal more exciting guests and engaging topics. Meanwhile, feed your mind, exercise your body, and nurture your spirit. 
The United Intentions Foundation and its associates take no responsibility for the opinions and statements made by the talk show hosts or their guests.